We're ready to go. Okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. And for all you new people, don't forget to subscribe. Today we're working on a tiller that we picked up on the side of the road yesterday. Now, we knocked on the door and the owner said that he put it out by the street because he didn't want it anymore because he couldn't keep it running for more than a minute. And I don't know what that means, but we figured the motor might be no good. It might have a transmission issue, but it's free. It's definitely worth looking at. So let's get started on that. Now that we've pretty much narrowed it down, we know we've got spark. We're going to head over to the carburetor. Because all you need is air, fuel, and spark to make a motor run. This thing's not trying at all. So, let's pull the carburetor off real quick. Now, a quick rebuild won't hurt it in any case. And it only takes a few minutes to clean them all up real good. That's pretty interesting. That was on pretty tight. Now we're just taking the linkage out of the way. This has got nothing to do with what we're trying to do. But it's definitely going to be all sorts of in our way when we're working on the carburetor. And remember, I know I say this a lot, but make sure you take pictures of the linkage. That picture could save your life later. This particular linkage isn't very complicated. And it comes apart pretty easy, but some of them are. Okay. Let's kink off our fuel line. And the guy says this thing runs for a minute and then dies, which is kind of odd. He says it does it when it's cold. If it was doing it while it's if it warmed up and then did it, then I'd be really suspicious of the uh, of the coil. Okay, when you're taking this linkage off, let's get in a little bit closer. You're taking the linkage off of this style of engine for this bar. You want to go ahead and clear the spring out of the way. There we go. Okay, clear the spring out. You see the spring's riding on the bar, so it's not going to go anywhere. Now you pull it about three quarters of the way off, and this pops right out. Before you pull it out a little bit, it's a complete pain in the neck to get this bar off, so you just slide it off a little bit first. Okay, carburetor's off. Let's take it over to the bench and have a look at her. Okay, let's see what's inside this bad boy. Now we're going to take her apart and we'll do a quick rebuild on it. Get her all in one piece. Now, not much to look at here. Go ahead and pull the float underneath. Now I've got to come back and touch on this for just a second. I didn't even notice this until editing, but if you look very carefully, the float's on upside down. Somebody took this thing apart and put it back together incorrectly, and that's why it wasn't running. So, I say at every video, take pictures. If this gentleman had taken pictures, he'd still have a perfectly good rototiller. Now, since gas isn't getting in, and we saw that it was dry when we took it apart, we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull our gas petcock off. We're gonna see if she's got an obstruction. It's not going to surprise me if this has got something in it. This one. Let's grab a bucket for all our little parts. I usually like to use a magnet, but with a carburetor, there's lots of parts that aren't magnetic. Okay, let's have a look inside here and see what we've got. Okay, I expected to find an obstruction in here, but I don't see one. 
Nope, and air blows to it pretty good. So that's not the problem. Okay, that looks nice and clean inside. And the way it works is these two holes cover these two and allow fuel to flow through when it's spun this way. When you spin it back that way, it blocks the second hole. Okay, we're going to go ahead and throw this in the parts cleaner as she is. No, let's pull the jet out first. Let's go ahead and do the jets on this while we're at it. Ugh. Now, in some carburetors, the jets are part of the uh, little bolt on the bottom of the bowl. In this case, it's screwed in the center. This is a pretty big engine. They don't list them in horsepower, they list them in uh, pounds of torque. This one's a 9.6, 196 cc motor. So the jets are pretty big on this one. I know it's not easy to see on the camera, but I can see daylight through the jet, so it's not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and run these through the parts cleaner. I'm gonna run them through the ultrasonic and get them all cleaned up, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Now everything's a little bit cleaned up. So now instead of trusting the ultrasonic, we're going to use, we call this Christmas wire. It's a type of wire used to hang ornaments so you can't see it on a Christmas tree. But it's a nice thin wire that fits inside all the little nooks and crannies well. And we're just clearing any extra things that might be in the jet. And we're going to follow that. I'm going to go down the center of the carburetor and do the same thing. There's a secondary orifice inside there. After we cleaned it, we blew this carburetor out really good. But that doesn't mean something big didn't get caught in there. Okay, I'm feeling flow. So, let's get her back together and get, get her back on and see what we've got. See if she wants to run now. I'm going to put her jet back in. Now you could spray carburetor cleaner or something like that in to uh, clean all this up. I don't, only because I don't like to get all the chemicals all over the shop. And so I went and invested in a cheap ultrasonic. And it's done pretty good for me so far. The one I use, I paid less than $100 for. I've been nothing but happy with it. Now notice when I'm doing this, I do this really slow. I turn, I, I just barely touch the trigger. And with the variable speed, if, you, if you're super light on the trigger, if it cross threads, it won't try to drive it in. So I don't have to worry about wrecking threads as long as I'm really gentle with it. Okay, let's see if that works good. Okay, now what I'm going to do is leave it off and blow into here. Nothing. Turn it on, and it flows free. So we know that's good. We know it's working as expected. Let's go ahead and put this back together. Did I do that? Hmm. It's been a little while. I don't remember if I took the needle off the float. The needle goes on like this. Springs a pain in the ass. There you go. Now, if this had a clog in the carburetor someplace, we'd know it now. But before we put it all back together, we're going to go ahead and check the uh, 
fuel line to make sure the gas isn't deep flowing through the fuel line correctly. Let's tighten these guys up. Okay, that should do it. This carburetor should be good to go. The gasket still looks usable, which is good because I haven't gotten a carburetor kit for this. All we did was clean this one up and use the parts we had. Using the parts you have and just cleaning it up real good and the inside, clearing the jets and making sure there are no obstructions. Well, you fix it 90% of the time. Let's get this big boy back together. Our gasket looks okay, so we're going to go ahead and use it. And if you remember when we took this apart, this linkage, this linkage right here, you put it on as you put the carburetor on. There you go. We'll slip our tiny little spring on. If you took pictures, then you remember how all this stuff works. If you didn't take pictures, well, I hope these pictures are helpful. Let's grab the tiny little spring that doesn't want me to grab it. There we go. Okay, and we're basically putting it back on in reverse of the way we took it apart. Ease the fuel line on and put the clamp back in place. And that looks pretty good. So what's next? We'll go ahead and release the gas line. And remember, you want to keep an eye out for drips while you're doing this because you just don't know what can go wrong. Let's get our top linkage back in place. Where did we put the bolt set for that? There they are, sitting right where we left them. I usually use magnets to hold the nuts and bolts and whatnot, but I didn't on this one. And it's because it's the only project I'm working on this morning. I know, I'm all sorts of in the way, but there's not much I can do for this one. Yeah, I'm trying to be pretty quiet, because if you look, the sun's just coming up now. It's about 20 after 6. But I'm living in Texas, and it's northern Texas, but it's still hot. They're expecting the high to be around 102 today, which is about 20 more than I prefer personally. Okay, let's review what we've got. We've got our fuel line. We've got our cutoff in place. We've got our linkage right. Let's check our linkage, make sure it's operating. And it is. Our choke looks good. So let's put our air cover back on. Now, half the time, these air covers are just the death of me. This style in particular, this happens to be the same style that my uh, pressure cleaner has. I've only had it apart once in its short life. And it just about wore me out putting this back on. Okay, let me grab some bolts. Some air bolts. Let's just switch off to our handy dandy 10 millimeter. And throw this back together. Now I've got to wait till 7 o'clock to test it. Remember, these bolts are also holding the carburetor on. So, do the back and forth on them. Because you want to make sure your carburetor is nice and square. And that's it. Now we're going to wait until the sun comes up all the way and give her a test. You see, still a little dark out there. I'd be really unpopular with the neighbors if I started kicking on engines this time of day. So we'll see you in about an hour. I'm gonna go eat breakfast. Okay, it's a little bit closer to a human hour now. It's about 9.30 in the morning. So let's go ahead and start this up and see what we've got. 
I'm expecting good things out of this. Okay, our gas is on. Our choke is on. Pull, rabbit. Let's hit the switch. Give her a pull. Sound pretty good. We're gonna let her sit for a few minutes. She's been running for quite a while. I'm sure the neighbors are bored with it by now and it seems to be running like a charm. Now, we got this on the side of the road and the gentleman said that it ran for a minute or two and then died. So we ran it wide open for a little while. The only thing we did to this was clean the carburetor up and put a new plug and an air filter in it. So before you throw your equipment away, give some thought to it. Even if you'd bought the carburetor, you would have spent less than $50 on this to get it running perfect. And this is an expensive machine. This is definitely the deal of the week for us. It went from free. We spent about $10 on a plug and a filter to we'll probably get five or six for it. We got a good deal. So thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.